Hey everybody, how's it going? Ryan the Mighty Quinn here, the cornerman underscore MMA. Before I forget, like, subscribe, share, you know the drill. Thanks for all the help and the support. Um, <clears throat> today's video, we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to talk about, since the recent uh, attraction of Bo Nichols and, and now UFC fighter, congratulations Bo, won two big fights on the Contender Series. I believe he's 3-0 or 4-0 now. Three-time national Division One national champion wrestler. Um, you know, he, easy search for him. You know, uh, we're talking about wrestlers in mixed martial arts and how and why they succeed. You know, um, you know, obviously uh, he's got he's he's got he's the big he's the star attraction now, up and comer, um, world class athlete. And let's name a few others while we're at it, just to um, just just to just to name a few. Um, more recently, Habib Henry Cejudo. Um, uh, Hamzat Shumayev, known for his wrestling, um, he's got a nice double leg. Um, and then we're going back the the grand ones: Matt Hughes, Tito Ortiz, Randy Couture, Mark Coleman. Um, who else am I missing here? And, oh, Brock Lesnar. You know. Um, oh, and then there's one one other person that actually is a wrestler that was he used the wrestling. Um, some uh, just he did the opposite of what we usually do, uh, and that's Chuck Liddell. Um, Chuck Liddell was a special case. He wrestled Division One, actually. He wrestled in the Pac-10, and uh, he used his wrestling defense to allow his power hands to take over. It's how he beat the he knocked out Randy twice. You know, that's how he made his bones. That's how he beat a bunch of really good wrestlers: Tito, Randy, uh, Hanato Sabral. Um, so he was an interesting. Actually, I always said that Chuck was the first real Chuck slash Matt Hughes. Chuck was the first real. Um, to combine a two style champion, combine a two, combine a two style mixed martial artist to really set off. Um, and now, of course, everyone has all three styles. Um, going back down the list, you know, Matt Hughes very similar, but he was the other way. He had the offensive wrestling to work his ground and pound, work his jujitsu. Well, let's just stick away from ground and pound. That's more of a wrestling attribute. But um, yeah, everyone else that I mentioned there was very good at using and implementing their offensive wrestling. Um, and in order to get the fight to the ground where they wanted to go. Now, why is wrestling so dominant in mixed martial arts? Uh, it's one of the it's one of the only styles. Uh, judo is too, um, to an extent, but it's really it's probably the only style where it's focused outside of mixed martial arts as a whole. It's it's focused as a um, it has both stand up and ground tactics involved. Uh, you, you you feel me? So we got we're on a stand up. We have to work our our uh, suplays or throws, as a lot of people know them as, slams in mixed martial arts. Our takedowns, our actual takedowns. And on the ground, we have our control, our pinning. And on top of our defensive ground, where we're trying to stand up, which is huge in mixed martial arts now. So in that aspect, wrestlers have a leg up. You know, and that's not, let's not mention the conditioning. We haven't even gotten into that. Um, I wrestled Division One. I. I was an All-American high school wrestler. Um, the conditioning, it's... It's fantastic. It's great. I don't want to say it's the be-all, end-all. Um, wrestlers are notorious for overtraining or um, not going outside of their training style. Uh, but it really is. It's it's a cut above the rest as far as everything else. It's much easier to transition into other styles of conditioning after you wrestled than going from um, other styles and transitioning to wrestling conditioning. Um, it really sets you up in multiple in multiple areas for being explosive for um, doing having power and uh, muscular endurance. So I think that's another reason why on top of the technical side, the physical side, the physicality is the why wrestling extend, excels in mixed martial arts. Um, I was going another way with that. Oh, and it's also, it's very easy. Um, it's very easy for wrestlers or no, it's not, don't go. Well, it's not easy at all. It's much more, it's much more simpler to transition to unlearning some of your wrestling than it is for a striker to, to, be, to get into striking grappling than it is for a striker to get into wrestling. Now I know that purpose, me personally, when I see stuff like that, like I was always really tight for my wrestling, really tight. I was, my stance was here. I was so tight. You know? And that was an issue. You know, it was easy to learn to relax, you know, or no, it wasn't easy, but once it was easier, I would say to learn to relax than it was for a striker or a kickboxer coming into MMA, which, or coming into wrestling, which they were like overly root loose and their muscles weren't conditioned to tighten up as mine. I, I can always, um, I guess it's called decentric. I can always relax my muscles to a less heightened state instead of 
a, a striker who has never had to tighten their muscles in that aspect to tighten them up. I don't know if that makes sense, but it wasn't un, it, it wasn't uncommon where I'd go against I'd be wrestling against kickboxers and boxers who, by the way, had really strong hips, really really strong hips. They really, especially against the cage, they really sucked to take down kickboxers and Muay Thai boxers. Um, but they would be real loose in their stance, trying to tie up them like this. And be like, what are they doing? Are they mocking me? Like, um, that was, that was something that I always found interesting. Um, but, uh, which again, against the cage too, which is for obvious reasons why wrestling excels, um, unless you have the, so those kickboxing hips, which they should utilize, which they should utilize to their advantage. Now, um, I, I, I was thinking of this video because I was thinking of things that I did for myself some troubles that I fell into as a wrestler transitioning to mixed martial arts. I remember I said when I dropped down to 155, um, I used to be a wrestler doing mixed martial arts, and now I'm a mixed martial artist that uses my wrestling. Now, um, what does that mean? So, I didn't really, I wasn't, I didn't really unlearn everything at the at the extent that I needed to. So, I had to, I had to come to terms with what I was as a fighter. Now, I was never going to be an Anderson Silva with my striking or even a George St. Pierre with my striking. You know, I was never going to be a Chuck Liddell. I, I, had to, I had to work with what I had. And a lot of wrestlers, they have, they're often too stiff. They, they don't really throw harsh combinations. They're looking for that power. And they get caught up with people who are creating angles on them. They get caught up with people who can throw a lot of volume. Me, I had bad losses against guys that were out jabbing me early in my career. Um, so how did I fix that later on? Um, first off, I started cheating into a full um, boxing stance. A more full, like, I, um, I know mixed martial arts stances are a little different than boxing and obviously wrestling or striking and obviously wrestling. Um, I would cheat and blade my body more. That I felt that gave me more because I was so confident in my wrestling. I was taking everybody down. I was short, so I wasn't easy to get taken down. Um, so why, what did that happen when I did that? By, by cheating into that boxing stance or kickboxing stance, it allowed me to use my striking tools a little bit more, which I needed help with. Okay, I was a natural wrestler. I've been wrestling since I was 12. I was able to get into the wrestling from any stance, you know, and on top of that, it gave me more power and more range with my power shots because I was blading my body. Now, I would almost, I would say to my opponent by doing that, you're, if you're going to beat me in grappling, you're going to beat me with a single leg. I'm going to make you beat me with a single, which if you notice in mixed martial arts, nobody really finishes single legs anymore. If they get a single, they jack you up against the fence to try and get the double. Uh, very rare do we see single leg finishes anymore. So that's one thing I did. Another thing I did is I had to get my head movement down. I had a bad injury. I broke every bone in my face because I was trying to go up against a guy who boxed in the Olympics from Spain. And he was just out striking me with everything. And then he just ended up peppering me with jabs because I was just coming forward like this. Wrestlers got to get that head movement down to camouflage your, your weakness in the striking realm, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, this video is more or less for up and coming fighters, hopefully wrestlers. It'll help you out. Um, and of course, you got your stud athletes like the Bo Nichols, who he looks great no matter what he's doing. But um, another thing is I made sure that I had a great jab. I, it, that's one thing I had. I, I, it's not that I was never going to use my right hand and my left hook. I had a really powerful left hook as well. Uh, but I made sure that I had a good jab down. I mean, why did I do that? I wanted to hide behind it. I wanted to use it to close distance in order to get in on my wrestling, get in on my clinch work, my tie up or jab to get away and circle out. Very important. Footwork too, obviously footwork's important for everything, you know, use that lateral movement, but my jab, hiding behind my jab also camouflaged my, my inferior offensive striking and allowed me to set up, I would always, instead of a right hand, I would shoot my double leg, stuff like that. So a, a wrestler, you really need to get down that good jab, that stance and that head movement, um, stuff that I found very, um, it very, it really helped me out. Listen, I took down everybody. There's nobody in mixed martial arts I couldn't take down. And I'll put money on that. So everyone at American Top Team. So um, this is what worked for me. You know, I think it'll work for a lot of people. You know, got to get that jab movement. Um, how did I get my jab going? I was training with Aaron Davis in the Bronx. Um, he would have me jab so much. I remember, you know, usually you drive 10 and 2. Uh, my left hand would be so dead. I would have to drive home from the Bronx 45 minutes with my right hand like this because I couldn't move my left hand. And I remember my jab, my little muscles were so, were so endured. And my, I just ended up having a great jab from it. Really saved my career. 
that's what I got, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please check out all the other stuff we've done with the cornerman underscore MMA. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.